Hi guys, welcome to the Honeystocks.com halftime report for the 1st of October 2019. Now, I've had uh, a lot of messages, a lot of emails asking me what's going on with the market just now, how should we be playing it. So, what I've put together is around 15 charts again, just to give you a little bit more insight. I think a lot of you are struggling with where to identify some strength in the market. So maybe if you're out there and you keep going back and you keep trading the same stock, hopefully this helps you out in some way. First thing to say, as always, if you you know have just come across what I do, please pause the video, make sure you're comfortable with that. I think I also want to add that if you have absolutely no no idea, no clue what you're doing in the market, if you're acting upon charts on social media, if you're acting upon any of the charts that I'm about to present to you, you're in serious danger of, of losing capital. Um, so if you are somebody that does struggle a little bit, you can maybe stick around for a couple of minutes at the end. I might be able to help in some way, but please be very, very careful with this if you don't know what you're doing. I also want to just you know throw out there that I don't do get-rich-quick schemes. I'm very much in the camp of weeks to months as my time horizon for taking any positions in the market. I'm not a day trader. I, I couldn't think of anything worse. So, yeah. If you're a day trader, this is probably not going to help you. Technical analysis is my thing. I'm currently working my way towards my chartered status for technical analysis. So everything that I'm going to present to you just now is fully backed up with, with technical analysis. And if you enjoy it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do try to upload a couple of times a week. So let's get into the charts. So... I think first up, I really just want to talk about the S&P 500 for a second. We're obviously pushing up against the all-time high resistance, and that's a very logical level of resistance. For those of you that have any real understanding of technical analysis, you'll know what this level is. Um, but what we can also see, and I highlighted this at the weekend, where we actually have a, a declining uh, percentage in the number of stocks that are trading above their 200 simple moving average. Now, that's a concern. What we would expect to see when stocks are pushing up against new highs, we would want to see the percentages increase. But as we're seeing at the moment, we're seeing a very clear decrease. So what we have to observe are many more charts to, to give us a, a broader idea of what direction the market is likely to move. This chart is also a big clue for me at the moment. The, the Russell 2000 is a basket of 2000 stocks and we're pushing up against resistance at the moment. So I will be watching this level with a lot of interest. I do feel that if this level breaks, which it does look like it's on its way to testing again, if this level breaks, then you need to be very, very cautious in the, the equities market. It might get very ugly very quickly. So that's a chart that I would encourage you to pay attention to. The other thing to say is the financials. We all know that when the market is rising, financials generally participate. Now, we're not seeing participation by financials at the moment. We've met resistance. This is the weekly chart. This is the daily chart where we're trading in a range. Now, when we're trading in a range, it's pretty logical that we move from the top to the bottom and the bottom to the top until something eventually gives and we get a breakout in either direction. So given that we're in a range and the range is downward at the moment, we have to be very careful with stocks like JP Morgan. Now, JP Morgan above this level, you know, I'd be the first to, to, to throw out there absolutely bullish. It was a, a trade that was working out. Not so more anymore. Uh, I think we, we need to be very careful in this level. Now, the other thing to say is this candle will only complete on Friday. So there is plenty opportunity and plenty of time for JP Morgan to rebound and uh, move to the upside. But I think if you're in JP Morgan at the moment, I think it makes a lot of sense to be very, very cautious and to maybe start thinking about de getting defensive a little bit. That's purely a technical play. If you're a fundamental guy and maybe you're in it for the dividends, etc., you know, perfectly acceptable as well. But 
you know, from a technical level, I think it makes a lot of sense to, to be a little bit cautious. I highlighted Facebook at the weekend as a stock you might want to think about getting defensive on. I think that thesis is now starting to play out. Um, we're obviously seeing declines now. It's not just Facebook. You know, I'm going to be talking about quite a few charts here. But the good thing about this uh, presentation is I'm actually going to present you with a, a better alternative. So I'm going to alternate between good and bad. So Facebook, I think at the moment, isn't really working out. Maybe if you're looking you know, for a short position, uh, I think you can certainly be short on Facebook below this level and obviously you know, bullish above it. Now, I've deliberately not added any technical indicators to the chart because uh, Procter & Gamble, PG, needs no technical analysis. That is all you need. You just need to know the direction of the stock and you know, I think the the trend is there for all to see. So, would you rather trade Facebook or would you rather tra trade Procter and Gamble? I'll, I'll let you think about that one. Uh, Roku, I think you need to be defensive below this level. We have tested it a little bit. We've had a little bit of a rebound followed by a uh, a bit of a decline, obviously on uh, Tuesday there. So, I think it makes a lot of sense with Roku. I think I'm I'm very on the record with Roku. I've been bearish since here. I highlighted it in a, a one of the analysis presentations where we were forming a bearish flag. Again, we had a dead cat bounce, and you know it's it's been melting down ever since. Now I think the fundamental story is clearly changing as well with Roku. We've got technicals starting to look less attractive. It just doesn't make a lot of sense for me at the moment. Whereas Southern Company, you know, what one would you rather trade? I, th I think, you know, that, that chart again, similar to Procter & Gamble, just makes a lot of sense. Tesla, I've been asked so many times about Tesla over the last few months and my response is exactly the same. Where the hell does it go next? Nobody knows. There's many... Elon Musk fans, and I'm one of them. I, I love Elon Musk. I love what he what he's doing. I love his innovation, but the stock price, that the chart, just doesn't make a lot of sense. It's it's a complete gamble. I, I think those of you that are out there that are maybe trading Tesla, you're probably gamblers, or maybe you've got a, you believe in the fundamental story of the company, and that's fine as well. But I think when we look at the technical side of things, the chart is just it's a piece of shit. It's not. It's not a great risk to reward. It's no consistency. There's just nothing to it. So, Tesla, where does it go? I've no idea. But KBH, I think um, you know when we look at this rise that it's had, one hundred and four percent over the course of the last twelve months. I like it. I think it's probably due a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of a breather, which would be logical, but I feel that that will likely offer opportunity. So the thing that, that you should understand is that I have an approach that's primarily based upon identifying strength within the market, finding optimal entries, finding the best areas of the market to exploit. I'm not really in it for gambling. I'm not really in it for... The, the short term excitement, I couldn't think of anything worse. So for those of you that like a little bit of consistency and you maybe want to just improve your stock selection a little bit, again, like I said, you can maybe hang around for a couple of seconds at the end. Caterpillar, I've been asked about this a few times as well. I'm very much in the camp that I'm waiting for a breakout. I've been waiting for a breakout on Caterpillar for a number of months now. I have my alert set. I'm not going to go in a second before this. I think there's obviously an exposure to China, which is a, an issue, I think, with every, every company that has exposure to China, the Chinese tech stocks, etc. You know, again, it's a bit of a gamble. I've been working with one of my clients super closely on Alibaba at the moment. And even with that, that huge rise that we had uh, last week when I think it got up to, to kind of 184, you know, it wasn't a case that 
we should be bullish on on Alibaba, and you know, thankfully, we managed to get uh, my my client out a, a very healthy profit. But I think the message I'm trying to get across here is that if you're touching these types of stocks that have the exposure to China, you need to be accepting of the risk. And I I do feel like there's better risk to reward propositions available elsewhere. Um, Home Depot is working out. I, I think you just need to look at the, the home builders. I think they are flying. I, 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 I don't see why you would really want to choose another area of the market, shall we say. But Home Depot, I, I think they are performing well. It's a trade that's working at the moment. So again, do a bit of due diligence. Square Inc. Again, I must receive a million emails about Square Inc. Um, again, I, I used to love the company as well, but look at the chart, guys. It's it's horrible. It's messy. There's no clear direction. But if you want exposure maybe to financial tech, you know, you might want to consider something like Afterpay Touch Group. Um, and, you know, I think 220% in the last 10 months kind of, you know, tells a story. Um, just... As a, an FYI, this is a, an Australian company and one of my Australian clients, we talked about this when we had this breakout here and it's performing. So there's always alternatives. I, I think the, the message I really want to get across is, you know, you might be settling on stocks that you've gotten to know. You might have had a bit of consistency or a bit of success in the past, but that doesn't mean that you should be married to them. You should always have a philosophy where you're dating stocks and never marrying. You should be prepared to drop it in a heartbeat and move on to something that will cook you dinner more often. And that's the approach that, that I pretty much have. I think with Microsoft, I, again, I've been asked about this, and this isn't good news at the moment for tech in general. Now, Microsoft is obviously the one of the biggest components of the, the tech sector. So it stands to reason that if Microsoft does not get its uh, house in order within the next few days, then there's a very real possibility that we see a breakdown in tech. Now, again, that's not going to be good news. We, we're starting to see declines across the board. Um, you know, the financial payment companies now, I think Visa, MasterCard are starting to show a, a bit of early signs of weakness. And I think it really pays very well to understand when you might want to start getting defensive. Um, I've been preaching defensiveness for the last two months and my, my stance has not changed. Yes, um, I'm presenting charts that, that are still working, but they are very few and far between. You need to be very adept at identifying the strength in the market to get any kind of long-term success. Amazon, again, a chart, a stock that everybody likes, but I don't understand why, because the chart isn't paying anybody. And if it is paying anybody, it's always short-term day traders that are in and out with options and you know, trust me, those guys do not win when it comes to trading. So that's maybe something for you to consider over the, the next 24 hours. Hopefully you've got a bit of insight from this. Hopefully it's given you a, a bit, of, uh, bit of knowledge. And if you have enjoyed it, as I said, down in the right hand corner, you will have a subscribe button. Feel free to subscribe to us. But if you are somebody that does struggle a little bit, you can maybe pop over to our website, honeystocks.com, check out what we do. Um, there's lots of incredible knowledge on there and it might just be worth reaching out and having a chat with us. But thank you very much for watching and uh, maybe I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.